So it's six o two p.m. <clears throat> and um, it's six o two p.m. And well, I wanted to do a video before six thirty because I wanted to have enough time to upload a video here, you know, before I leave. Excuse me. <clears throat> so starting to get sleepy. So I, I don't really know how long <clears throat> of a nap. I, I dozed off earlier and took a nap. And I don't know how, how I don't remember how long the nap was, you know. And so um, I'm glad I was able to get a nap. So I slept better last night. And I was able to, I ended up <clears throat> dozing off, I guess, for a couple of hours today. <clears throat> and then, now, I guess it's a good sign that I'm feeling sleepy. <clears throat> so I thought I was having, like, no luck or no help this morning. And everybody saw it. So thankfully, you know, someone helped me with $15. And... <clears throat> That was right after lunch. I tried to scramble around for what little change I had. And, you know, even if it was one taco, you know, I was, you know, going to, like, have a taco for lunch. But thankfully, you know, someone was nice enough to let me have two tacos and um, told me don't worry about paying. So, thankfully, I was able to have help with that. So, I'm feeling like on the verge of wanting to cry. Because, um, I'm feeling like on the verge of wanting to cry because... I mean, I don't know this, I guess this random feeling of on the verge of crying because, um, like, I, I've been emotionally hurting in my heart, I mean, emotionally lately, and it seems like as I get older and each year progressively, everything just gets worse, and... <clears throat> and then the narcissistic game stalkers, they sabotage your entire life and ruin and destroy everything. And then turn around and say that nobody is to blame for your problems except for you. And that you created this mess and this chaos. And then say that you're the narcissist and you're the one, and you know... You're the one who's the narcissist and full of, you know, playing the victim and want pity, sympathy, and attention, and this, that, whatever. And it, it's like being labeled a mental patient. It's like a death sentence, I guess, you, you know. It's like once people label you crazy, then you're out of here. Or, or you, it's over. And so, I, I mean, narcissist people with narcissistic personalities, they make they make it like as if the whole entire world is supposed to hate me, and want nothing to do with me, and and so um. It's a shock that there's any people, the few people left who value me as a human being. And then to be treated, you know, like I do deserve to be valued as a human being. The moment someone is nice to me, a narcissistic abuser would do something like be quick 
to put that to a, to a halt. Quick to put it to a stop. Quick to nip it in the bud. And then brainwash that person to treat me like how the knock themselves treat me. And, and once that flying monkey, once that person is re-educated or brainwashed, it's no turning back. No turning back. So, um, and I've been dealing with this, like people turning people against me. I said before, my first experience that I remember of discrimination and being singled out was at that daycare at the nursery. I was only three years old. That's my first memory of being singled out and being discriminated against. And then there were pictures of me and my twin sister being seen as the favorite when I guess we looked like we were two years old. <clears throat> but but like the by the time we were three, four, five years old, those ladies at the nursery they ended up being extremely abusive and mean and they hated us. And they definitely would single us out and treat us mean and keep us punished and say that we were bad and, you know, being singled out and treated a certain way and hated in kindergarten. But as I said before, you see, Star Bricker recently made remarks about old oh, Candy was, Candy even admitted that she had, no, I didn't say I had behavior. I'm saying that they were saying that I have bad behavior. You know, she tried to say, well, Candy even admitted to having bad behavior even as in, in early childhood or, or something like that, you know. So they're taking things that I said from early childhood to justify why Candy's been born and wicked or born evil or born a bad person and let's get rid of her. But you, here you're a 62-year-old bully. <clears throat> so, um, and it's, it's amazing how the same people abusing and bullying me, how they can be damn good friends with my twin sister. And so, um, you know, of course, always being punished in first grade. And as I said, a child acting that way is not going to be just badly behaved for no reason. What abuse was going on in the household? Abuse or neglect? Because the foster mom neglected us too. She did. And then there was a point in time how the foster mom was getting paid as a foster parent. See, whoever's talking up in there, I can hear them. So, um, <clears throat> the foster mom used to always have everybody else watching us. And she used to work, she used to be a um, secretary for Exxon, for whatever. <clears throat> and that woman stayed with side hustles. The foster mom never really taught us anything. All she did was use us as clean up slaves and and force us to the, attend the fake IDMR cult meetings and, you know, force us to go to school and then we come home, you know, clean up, get my house clean. I want my house clean. And nothing was ever good enough. <clears throat> so, so, I mean, while the online perps are pointing out my so-called bad behaviors from childhood, my twin sister was noted to, you know, they used to say that both of us had bad behavior and both of us were, you know, always getting in trouble or always getting suspended. But there have been times when we try to better ourselves, like after middle school, try to act better. And my twin sister, I guess, was supposedly better at um, fighting back and standing up for herself than I was, you know, and they made it like as if I was like the easy pushover while she used to fight back. 
and but she had the most physical abuse from the kids at school and mine was more psychological and mental and emotional and then she was never I mean I was never around when <clears throat> I was never around when when um whenever someone when another kid physically assaulted her or did her something you know and so um So both of us grew up, you know, always getting in trouble or, you know. But there are some people who hint at the idea that what we went through, and my twin sister too, that what we went through was in intentional, organized, um, strategic, MK Ultra. Satanic ritual abuse mind control. <clears throat> and um and people say it's typical for narcissistic caregivers or parents to pit siblings against each other. You know. So I did not find out until just now that my twin sister is supposedly having like um Stomach and heart issues. But I can't say much more. But you know how it's like the online perps, they find lots of joy in keeping us divided and arguing, you know, and they it's like they wanna they wanna keep us pit against each other. Rather than, like, it's like they'd be like, well, I hope you and your sister can reconcile. They'll tell her that, but nobody ever came and told me that, you know, but they tell her that. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> you know, I just wish people would open their eyes to the big picture and the, and the truth about what's really going on, you know, and I wish that she would, too. But it's like, I'm in this gang stalking program and people are, you know, they say that if you're a TI, then you're set up for blood sacrifice for insurance money or whatever, human trafficking <clears throat> and, you know, for insurance money and to be blood sacrificed to, you know, so, and a lot is hidden with my biological family, us being from New Orleans and stuff, you know. But I mean, I wish that that I could sit down, even if it's over the phone. But it's like both of us have each other's phone numbers blocked and our social media accounts like Twitter <clears throat> and YouTube and all blocked, both of us. But it's like the online perps <clears throat> want to keep us divided and if I were to try to reconcile it's like I would be forbidden or not allowed to talk about the gang stalking even if I'm talking about if an another gang stalker you know doing something to me being the target individual or another one or another one <clears throat> then she will say that Oh, for you to talk about that person gang stalking you, oh, you're starting up the argument again. Rather than having, like, rather than believing me and having empathy, sympathy, and compassion and emotional support and care and whatever she would be going through. If I could offer that same, you know, support for whatever she might be going through. Because there was a point in time I questioned and wondered if she's targeted too. But other, but it's like some people say that your twin sister has been paid off and compromised. Or, or that she's being mind controlled to treat you this way. But, you know, I never in my life got a penny off of doing anything wrong to my twin sister. Ever. And I never got paid or compensated for hurting anyone. 
You know, they're trying to get me banned or kicked out of this library, the online perks, that's what they're trying to do. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I just wish people would wake up. They got some people who know the truth, but just want to gaslight you and, and um, cause you more misery. And mental health system is part of the gang stalking, part of the targeting, in a way, it's a system place to gaslight the target. So the psychiatry and MK Ultra, excuse me, is um, it it comes from Nazism. So something not seeing racist and eugenicist, you know, and then black people telling each other, oh, you know, you need to see a psychiatrist or you need help, you know, or you, you're schizophrenic or you're crazy or whatever. Do the doggone real research on the satanic and evil origins of psychiatry and the mental health system. And Scientology is just as evil. CCHR is just as evil. <clears throat> and so, you know, whatever me and my twin sister is going through, it's like, I wish that the online perps would butt out and just let us have our time with each other or for each other. Uh, but they, <clears throat> So, you know, some people say is you need to reconcile before one of y'all die first. With the way things looking, I'm wondering if I'm going to die first or get killed or something, you know. <clears throat> but it's like the foster family, not just the mom, but the family, foster family, conditioned my twin sister to be cold-hearted towards me because they were cold-hearted towards both of us. My twin sister used to be persecuted, hated, and abused back then, too. But some people say that my twin sister got treated better because she was more compliant with the programming and the mind control, that she was more compliant. So that's why she get treated better, you know. <clears throat> but I'm deeply hurt by this. And neither one of us are at fault, but we got to get to the root of the problem. You know, we got we to get to the root of the problem. You know, and it hurt me for my twin sister to and tell people to not help me with the hotel room when I'm showing physical footage of it, like Hurricane Ida or tornado and hail, and whether that's too dangerous to even be outside and to be falsely accused of wanting to be homeless on purpose for pity, sympathy, and attention, and money. And then her telling people, don't help me, or saying that if anything happened to me, that I die, or if I suffer and stuff, that it's not her problem. You know. <clears throat> so. It's like. But it's like the online gang stalkers are, they want to make sure rec reconciliation is not possible. And it's narcissistic for them to think they have a license to meddle in our, in, in our business. You know, but I was talking about all this gang stalking as a whole. And a lot of her tactics that my twin sister did, it was gang stalking. And still is, you know. Like, when I went through it with Trisha, my twin sister and all those people ran to Trisha's page after I exposed the truth about Trisha. And Trisha played the victim and lied on me and over-exaggerated and twisted everything. And then after Trisha got the attention she wanted, now everything is funny now. And my twin sister wasn't too sick to do seven-hour live streams mocking, laughing, and making fun of me. So how the hell am I supposed to know she's sick and she's doing stuff like that to me? <clears throat> so.
So, um, and it's, it seemed like the online gang stalkers who are meddlers, it's like they're trying to exacerbate everything and make just make everything worse. And then they tell her, we got your back, Brandy. We got your back. We on your side, whatever. But I hardly really have many, many, much of anybody to tell me something like that. Or give me the re- the assurance or the reassurance that they believe me or that they know I'm telling the truth. And it's like people, they know the truth and they see the truth. And they just don't want to be convicted of their own evil. That's why they want to try to shut everything down and gaslight and deny it. While continuing their evil. And abuse. <clears throat> so, I mean, both me and my twin sister grew up abused. But she get more emotional support than I do. But she could and should be at the forefront. Other than Jesus Christ first. You know, <clears throat> she, she ought to be at the forefront. Her and family, you know, supposed to be at the forefront. Of emotional support, you know, especially Sean, Wyatt, and Mark. Been through this foster care abuse too. <clears throat> but even the biological family is dysfunctional. You know, that's why I call it the mentally slow, crazy biological family, including myself. Yeah. We all mentally off, slow, and retarded. But why, you expect me to be normal? They say that if you been through constant, grew up with a narcissist, they say that it's, it's more traumatic being, than being a prisoner of war or um, you know, being, a, being out in combat. Or being in a cult, the trauma is more than, worse than combat, you know. But, um, I wish that there wasn't so much division and favoritism. You know, if other sets of twins can have things equal, it's like, I wish that, you know, if there was equal between me and my twin sister. But see, the foster mom was hateful and abusive. You know, we grew up hearing her and her husband, Al, the foster dad, Al, argue, fuss, fight all day. But um, Al used to go hang out with his friends on the weekends. He didn't really stay at the house and chill or hang out on the weekends. He would go to, they would argue, fuss before work. Al go to work, the foster mom Ann go to work, and Ann, Adrian Felder, you know, they come back from work, and then they argue, fuss, fight. Well, not physically, but, you know, argue, fuss. Mm-hmm. And they all, like, screaming through the top of their, screaming from the top of their lungs. And the foster mom had us terrified of her. So, um, I don't know, it was, it was like, I feel like I'm not emotionally ready to reconcile with my twin sister like I would want to because I would have probably have to, I'm not ready, I'm emotionally fragile at the moment and I'm not emotionally ready to um, take more abuse if we were to talk over the phone and stuff. But, you know, I don't want her to realize until, realize after it's too late that Wow, Candy been telling the truth the whole time. Or Candy wasn't so crazy after all. I should have listened to Candy. So anyway, before I go, it's 6.26 p.m. And I wanted to show y'all how that lady, how she did. She like, like when I was talking on the phone, I already explained what happened. And she looked like this. She walked in there like, and then she raised up her upper body and raised up like her upper body and her head and stuff like, walking around arrogant and proud. 
and like she walked in there like and then turned around and walked off like she thinks she dominates and runs every damn thing but she gave me issues last year you know and so I've been doing like videos just about every freaking day in here almost not every day but um you know, and I also come in here for quiet time, and I feel more comfortable in here, you know, and folk try to focus on my writing, or blogging, or, um, you know, short stories or whatever, and I, I feel more, I feel more comfortable, you know, and stay away from everybody, stay away from trouble, try to, and so, um, you know, that really triggered me, because the foster mom, she did just like the foster mom would do. You know, and I already explained about the phone call thing. So, um, excuse me, but I'm glad that they have a few people, not many, but very few people, very few people. I can count on my hands how many people actually care, you know, care and have compassion and, you know, want to help. And that's not narcissistic, abusive or controlling and um, I, I mean, I guess there are a few people who care about me, but it's like people want to rob me of my humanity. So um, anything helps if y'all can donate to help me out. I gotta go.